This is the southern entrance to Leeds train station. It's still relatively new, having opened in January 2016 at a cost of £20 million. And if you want to be at this side of the station, it does save you quite a walk. And it gives great access to the south bank parts of the city centre. And as you come out of the station, just across the river is Holbeck. In the 18th century, it was a hamlet of just a few streets, much of it owned by the businessman and colliery owner John Scully. There were two things that Holbeck was known for at the time. One was hand weaving and the other was spa water, which was taken in to the city centre to be sold. But by the time of the Industrial Revolution, Scully had sold all of his properties and major change was underway. By 1855, Holbeck had its own train station, but this was no ordinary station. It had a top level and a lower level with a bridge to carry one track over the other. Now the station lasted just over a hundred years. Before it closed, the bridge was demolished and the top track was taken up. But there's another railway connection which survives today, despite the fact that it's been disused for almost 30 years. This is Holbeck Viaduct. It goes from Canal Junction at Leeds Station right through Holbeck to Farnley Junction. With more than 90 arches, several overbridges and a few subways, this 1.7 kilometre viaduct was considered one of the greatest engineering feats of its time, snaking through South Leeds and elevating the trains high above the mills and houses. Built to last from tough black engineering brick, it saw its last train in 1987. There have since been plans to turn this into a green walkway and elevated park. With industrial development came the building of factories and some of the most interesting ones are still around. A number have been redeveloped and have new uses, whilst others await the day where their turn will come around. This on the sides of the Leeds-Liverpool Canal was completed in 1866 for Thomas Harding. He made pins for the textile industry. Indeed, this five-acre site was the biggest factory making pins anywhere in the world at the time. And the buildings included a tower which was based on the Torre de Lamberti in Verona. Now Harding's son, also called Thomas, extended the buildings in 1899 and the extension was very much influenced by his love of Italian architecture. He added this taller tower which is modelled on a tower by Giotto forming part of Florence Cathedral. This was also a functional tower. The works closed in 1981. Part of the site has now been converted into offices and studios and there are plans for a mixed-use development on the rest of the site, including new homes and offices. Flax spinning pioneer John Marshall moved his business here from Scotland Mill in Adel. He bought a large swathe of land and started building from the late 1790s. Now what remains today is three mills built between 1815 and 1831 and these were initially powered by water but later on by steam. Now the site has been turned into smart offices with some of the other buildings used for leisure purposes. But Marshall had some land left over and in 1836 his son James Marshall began work on an audacious factory and offices to allow the diversification into the manufacture of cloth and thread. Temple Mill was built in the style of two Egyptian temples with glass skylights and grass on the roof with sheep grazing to keep it at the right length. The interior was kept at a constant temperature and humidity and at the time it was built it was the biggest single room anywhere on the planet. This building was going to be a brand new factory for Burberry's, but the deal is off. As Holbeck's only Grade 1 listed building, this now has an uncertain future. Just across the road is the Round Foundry, named after one of the original buildings, a large rotunda which burnt down in 1875. And this was one of the world's first specialist engineering foundries where locomotives for the nearby Middleton Railway would have been made. It's now the round foundry for digital and media businesses with some of the other buildings on site being used for other offices, bars and restaurants. Several of the movers and shakers of the industrial growth of Holbeck are buried here at Holbeck Cemetery. 
Monuments stand here to Adam Payton, who invented the colour lithographic printing machine, and Thomas Beecroft, who invented the band knife for cutting cloth, allowing the mass production of clothing for the first time. This is a memorial to Henry Marsden, a former Lord Mayor of Leeds. Now, he invented a machine for crushing stone, allowing roads to be built more quickly and more easily. Not only the great and good were buried here, these are the so-called guinea graves for those who died in poverty. For 21 shillings, an average of about 60 pounds in today's money, you could get 36 letters on a tombstone and as many as 46 different people are listed on a single monument. Holbeck was once one of the most densely populated parts of the city. Now that has all since changed. The areas that have been redeveloped have thrived and are thriving, but there are still great swathes of Holbeck that are run down and in disrepair. Their time will come, but it does seem to be taking an awful long time to happen. This is Jonathan Strait for The Lowdown.